Group D reaches its climax. We're into the quarterfinals after this. Papua New Guinea would be favourites, you have to say, to be playing against England at Wigan next Saturday afternoon. But the Welsh know there is a chance. Papua New Guinea fans here tonight, but so are the Welsh. This is going to be good here. It's going to be good. Any John Keir side will be giving its absolute all. And never mind the odds, look at the history. He's inspired one or two. Great upsets down the year. Is this going to go down in his after-dinner speaking annals? The night the Welsh beat Papua New Guinea by that magic 22 points. We shall see. It's a tall order. We'll uh, not hide behind that fact. It is a hugely tall order. And we pause for a moment for the two anthems here as well tonight. There's an air of determination. Well, they're up against a very good side. to carry on. Rhys Martin, the Papua New Guinean captain. And this is the way they are lining up tonight. Just to remind you, Papua New Guinea, uh, Papua New Guinea, first of all, they rest a few tonight. PNG on the bench, Wessa Tanza, Sherwin Tanabe and Jeremiah Simbican all making their debuts when they come on and Jimmy Nutlick on the wing playing for only the second time at international level. Just a little bit of a gamble. 
knowing what they have to do tonight, but resting ahead of what they anticipate being that England matchup on Saturday at Wales. Well, Will Evans and Rodri Lloyd return to the starting lineup. Ollie Olds has recovered from a shoulder injury he suffered against Tonga. Carl Evans on the wing has also had to prove his fitness. Carl Evans has been catching the eye with that uh, terrific performance in uh, in the last outing against Tonga. The referee tonight is Gerard Sutton. Such judges Belinda Sharp and James Child, and our video referee should, and when we need him, is Chris Kendall. Stage is set, John Keir, he's done everything now. He's prepared his side as best he can, the glasses are on. The fingers will be flicking against the screen if it gets tense and nervous. Can his team deliver here tonight? Or, as the big expectation is, will Papua New Guinea avoid a 22 defeat or indeed go on to win this game to absolutely guarantee their place in the quarterfinals? Well, he's been making a name saying Carl Evans, and that's his girlfriend. I'm, I'm, I'm led to believe, I hope we're right, we could be in trouble, but we're led to believe that that's Carl's girlfriend. She'll be proud of what he's uh, what he's been doing. Just a handful of games with Wakefield after switching from Rugby Union. He played here at this ground at Doncaster Rugby Union before he was snatched up by Wakefield. A couple of games for them, or a handful of games for them. And a real World Cup to remember. 13 seconds of one game together. Players on the pitch, fans in the stands, recognising this anti-discriminatory moment. Well, the last time these two sides met, Papua New Guinea won by 50 points to six in Port Moresby five years ago in 35 degrees of heat and 98% humidity. How do they go on a wet Monday night in Doncaster? Well, the next 80 minutes will tell us that. Jonathan Davis and Robbie Hunter-Paul alongside us. Jonathan, first of all, what are you expecting from your Welsh compatriots here? Well, pride, passion, as they have shown in this tournament so far. They've been into every game as, as clear and the dogs, and they performed so well. And this is the last outing for them. They've just got to do the basics well. Unfortunately, there's the first mistake with a big hit, and that's what they have to do. Well, Look at that celebration. Do they think they get points for that? Welsh handling error? Robbie, yeah. what are you expecting here tonight? Look, I think the rain is going to help out Wales at this point in time. It's going to slow the game down a little bit. I think Papua New Guinea have just gone from strength to strength. I thought that Tonga used to get out of jail free card against him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think really Papua New Guinea have really made a real strong statement that during this World Cup that they actually are a power in the world of rugby league. Well, they have the early possession. Lachlan Lamb shifting it out to this left-hand side, Justin Olam. Yeah, just one of the star players in there, the Melbourne Storm centre tonight, Justin Olam. Back towards Lamb, who will be playing in Super League next year, of course, with the Lee Leopards. Emmanuel Wayne drives it in. And Edwin Apapi, another of the Lee players, who's been a real eye-catcher this year, the Championship Player of the Year, Apapi. He's got real zip out of dummy oh, half, but he's got a ball back here as well from the offload from Albert. The Welsh defence is under pressure right from the start. A dummy half goes Alec. Slow play the ball. Ships it out to Labour. Going wider right. Johnston helps it on his way. And then there's the handling error from the PNG side this time. And the Welsh will get the ball back. Yeah, good, good defending by Wales. He numbered up very well. It's a very good tackle. He's a very dangerous player. You've got to watch this Alex Johnson, so Sydney, class player. And I think that's one of the things that Wales needs to do, needs to hurry Papua New Guinea. Try and encourage him to play an offload game, and actually, in these conditions, that'll play straight into their hands. So Wales with a chance to bring it out. Matty Fossard at dummy half. John Keir. Work to us, Kyle. The mastermind of uh, so many upsets down the year. Years. Williams out of dummy half with his dash. He's the one of um, only two players, the two wingers, Williams and Evans, who played in Super League last year in this Welsh side. A lot of part timers with a championship and League One and Country Rugby League over in Australia. So this Welsh side is um, is just a band of brothers, really. And they've been playing that. That was high on Lloyd, was it? No, it wasn't. 
Referee says play on, and Fossard comes out to Ralph. Ralph with a kick up and high, and not like underneath it, but he's taken a slip. That's a good set by Wales, you know, they made an error on the first set. Now, this is all about the conditions and where you play the game. You know, force the errors in the opposition 20, put pressure on them. Well, the centre's got a, a night of handling errors, don't you? Because it is very, very wet. The rain began to fall down about 40 minutes ago. So the New Guineans just happy to keep possession here. Bringing it clear, get through the set, find themselves a good platform to get the kick downfield, maybe. That's good offloading, though. Nixon put on this left-hand side. Here's Olam. Olam trying to shake off defenders and gets Nutlick away. Nutlick looking for support inside. The ball's gone to ground. It's a slip and a slide. How many knock-ons there? At least a couple. Wells get head and feet at the scrub. Yeah. I'm not sure of the, of the tactics by Papua New Guinea there. The conditions aren't conducive to moving the ball. Yes, they did create space, but you've got to stay on the island. You've got to get your nose down and not go for the miracle offload. That's playing directly into Wales's hands. The more the ball can go to ground, the more it slows down. Wales will, have, Wales will have a field day. Yeah, I think Lam had to put a foot to that ball there. It's very difficult there, conditions. If he put a foot to it, I think the fullback would have been beaten. But you just got to be, Wales have got to be aware of Wellington Albert. Every time he's carried the ball in, he's, he's had an offload. He's a big fella, isn't he? He is. On the Broncos these days, but he's been uh, up in the Super League with Leeds not that long ago. England looking on, knowing that they'll be playing against one of these two opponents. There's no way the Cook Islands can qualify after their absolute trampling by Tonga yesterday, so it will be either or of these two. And maybe an advantage England as well before that match even starts, because there's another set of six here, because whoever wins tonight has only got five days, four days to recover before they face England. It's a big advantage for England. I think it's one of the reasons why Papua New Guinea rattled in the changes that they did. Benyon with a charge. Fossard waits at dummy half again. Six played. Wales have to score points here tonight. Ollie Olds goes left. This is Aikens. He's got a big bit of whiz bang and flash about him, but not on that occasion. It's back with Olds again towards the middle. Antrobus with a driving effort. He's run hard, doesn't he? All tournament, Antrobus. Fossard again. Back with Olds. Olds now. Little step again by Ralph. Josh Ralph. Well, they're in territory, but they've run out of tackles. There's only one to go here for Wales on the sixth. It's going to be Olds to try and make something with that kick to the end goal, but he's just overcooked it. And Papua New Guinea get it with a seven tackle restart on the 20. That'll be very frustrating for uh, John Key and the Welsh players, purely because, you know, getting a good field position, a deft little kick is needed, difficult conditions, but just put too much on it. So the first carry is from Roderick Ty. Only made his debut Anthony against Roy Tonga in the first game of this I'm World Cup, but this is now his third oh. appearance. He scored two in two, oh, so he's, he's enjoying right, himself right. at Rugby League World Cup 2021, despite the fact that it's 2022. Should have been last year, of course, but for the dreaded COVID. In Bali, another set of six for Papua New Guinea. That's the hooter in the background, just signalling that to the crowd as the referee waves his arm. Yeah, it's a big mistake. They're halfway, you know, reset. Labour drops it back in for Reese Martin, who's testing that Welsh defence. Ipape wants a quick one. Back on the inside for Albert. Albert posts it left. Lamb now throws it wide to Olam. Olam with a step back on the inside, bouncing off defenders. What a bullet offload that was, and just keeping it alive. The Welsh had to do well to recover there. They're under pressure on their own line. Ipape again. Ipape sees a gap, goes for it. Just about a foot hey. short of where he wants to be. Albert now. Here's Labour. Labour. He's going to go on the outside and he's going to score. Grabbed out by Antrobus. No more than that. And Labour skids through. And Papua New Guinea get the start they want with that early try. And that's the threat that Papua New Guinea's halves offer you. They can, they've set up really good uh, systems outside them. There were a number of different waves they were on with big runners about to find those lines, but when you've got a player like Labitt, and we've seen it on a number of occasions throughout this tournament, he does have the ability to put the foot down, 
and take the line on. What an offload that is. You know, another offload, take a bit of time to organise defence and just a, a mismatch. You know, just the outside man, I think, always gets up too early, creates the gap on the side of uh, Antrobus and a good halfback always takes that. Just a natural gap opened up. And that's one of the benefits of having a player like Reece Martin outside you. You know the defenders are going to have to deal with him. You switch off for one second, you get upstream, Labert gets in behind. Yeah, I think Oliver Olds there made the call for Labert. Just went up early, gap was there. <laughs> you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You don't get off the line, he's going to run over top of you. You get off the line too much and you open the door. There's a lot of rocks and hard places in that Papua New Guinean side as well, isn't there? Boulders. They do hit. Here's Martin, steps back. A prodigious goal kicker slides it through, and Papua New Guinea up and running six points to nil. If you've got a calculator by the side of your armchair, Wales now need 28 points and not concede again. He's a nice-looking player, isn't he, Kyle Lay, but... He did have a spell at the Cowboys, but he's playing in uh, in Townsville at the moment for the Blackhawks, not the Cowboys. He's a, he's a youth worker back home. Come off. Come off. Bands here. Keeping us entertained. Well, the rugby league on the field has been keeping us entertained in these uh, these opening few minutes as well. Too big. Too big. Well, there's the restart that... Too big. Too big. Yep, it's, uh, it's uh, all the way full. That's good play as well with Johnson. Clever, clever yeah, that, wasn't it? He just put his foot behind the dead ball line and then just it's a, it's a penalty. The ball goes out on the full, it's a penalty from the yeah. kickoff, and uh, if a player puts his Thank foot you. behind the ball, and there you see Alex Johnson doing just that. In fact, I think it was out Both. anyway, wasn't yeah, it? It was out yeah. anyway. So penalty again for Papua New Guinea. No fine touch. The tap restart has Reese Martin with that initial carry. Half away. Papi at dummy half. Now Wellington Albert. And Albert tearing a bit of a hole in that Welsh defence, but they recover. Antrobus gets his hands on him and pulls him down. The rain is teeming down at the moment. Alec pushing in. Another set of six. And that far from the line. That spells danger, the danger siren from the Welsh defence because Papua New Guinea have just got a moment to camp there with plenty of tackles in the bag. Back it comes for Laban. Driven in hard by Wayne, Emmanuel Wayne. Three Welsh defenders da are dancing around him. This is Ipapi. Ipapi, Lamb, Lamb, short pass. Nixon put the second row up, dragged to the ground. Welsh defenders scrambling around at the moment. Ipape will try a bit of more magic here. Throwing it out, back to Alec again. Alec, just robust and challenging, but Wales hanging on. Last tackle, last tackle. Can Wales survive here? Ipape goes left, the reach for the line, and Nixon Pott, Nixon Pott is there to score. It's heartbreak for Wales this early. But Papua New Guinea are looking to entertain here ahead of that big match against England. Yeah, good lead up play by Papua New Guinea there. They're being very patient. It's quite interesting there. They're choosing to hit the lead runner every single time, and that'll pay dividends when they come to the back end of the half and the defences keep to stay in. But they're on. That's just a one on one mess on the line. But I tell you what, this man, Dixon Putt, he's had a wow of a, of a, of a tournament. Powerful squat player. He's low to the ground, very powerful. And unless you get in front of him, it's just a mismatch. Yeah, a mismatch. I think he's on the half back there. Just runs over the top of him. But unfortunately for Wales, under pressure, but they're getting quick play the yeah, balls in power ball, PNG. Are, you know, reset on the halfway line, reset under the posts. They just can't do it. Too big, too strong on that occasion. But a great, yeah, a great line, flat yeah. ball. You know, you can't have time to come off your line. He just powers over the top of him. Well, give Papi some something he recognized that the halfback was looking in he realized that he had putt on his left hand side he knows how dynamic he is next to the try line and it was just a nice flat little touch of a pass too big too strong so Reese Martin settling himself again here he's kicked in these kind of conditions many many times in his Leeds Rhinos career this won't be a problem a rock back, 
A focus on the ball and a sweet sweep of the foot makes it goal at number two. And Papua New Guinea lead by 12 points to nil. And they're almost scoring at a point a minute in these early stages. Jonathan, how do Wales lift themselves here now? Well, discipline is one thing. Unfortunately, they've got to get up and uh, be a bit more aggressive in the tackle because what's happening is the Fingia players Whenever they hit the tackle, post-tackle, they are getting yards and yards. It is so difficult when they're on the back foot and there's a quick play of the ball. Yeah, they need to figure out of dominating the tackle. Yeah. At the moment, they're lying on top of the player, the player's on his front, and that's giving the back-to-back -back sets. But they need to somehow turn him onto his back and let the referee say, dominant tackle. That's the way to slow him down. Well, Papua New Guinea That's and Rugby really League, it's, uh, it, they are fanatics oh. in Papua New Guinea, aren't they? They absolutely love the sport. It is, um, you know, commonly quoted the fact that it is the national sport, Rugby League, in Papua New Guinea. But there is an argument to say that this is probably one of the best, if not the best, squads they've, they've ever assembled. They, they started with the PNG Hunters, didn't they, who got in the Queensland Cup a few years ago and you can see the development in Papua New Guinea and Rugby League since then. Well, certainly, this is the by far the best Papua New Guinean team I have ever seen. They're so more well-balanced and more disciplined as well. There's no, many, many different uh, levels to the Papua New Guinean game now. I think we'll only go to strength to strength. Labour with a kick, left foot it downfield, Williams underneath it, oh, the bounce. Straight out of play, straight out of play. The difference with this PNG side is that they, they travel well. You know, on previous occasions, as you said, they play in 35 degrees. You know, humidity is ridiculous. And then when they come abroad, they just, they, they didn't turn up. Now this side, with all you know, the experience of the players are currently having, you know, they go and travel well. Did you play in a defeat? Were you in a Great Britain side that got beaten in Papua New Guinea? I, I did. Yes, I thought you did. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> but the most recent Great Britain team well, also got big in Papua New Guinea as well. Does that make you feel like better, Jiffy? Yeah, wow. you know. Beat them 68 nil in Swansea, mind, but this is nice. Good oh. revenge. <laughs> Good revenge. <laughs> OK, no need to be smart. Is that, no no is that to weather smart. again? <laughs> to, to go there, it's just That's an experience. Papua New Guinea, it is absolute madness. You know, the support that this national side has is ridiculous. Mm. The most in, intimidating oh. place I think I've ever played. Oh, it's like the Beatles, right? There's another miscommunication amongst the Welsh. Trubus puts it down, so head and feet at the scrum here for Papua New Guinea. They've got to cut the mistakes out as well. You know, they've got another 12 points behind early in the game. Conditions will dictate the way you play. You, you can't be throwing loose passes. Do you think it's 35 degrees? There you go, normal wear. Normal wear for Doncaster on a wet Monday night, I tell you. Halloween. Heads in. Let's not be disrespectful to their national dress no, there, John. I'm not. I'm not. It's terrific. It's a fact. It is Halloween. 64% possession for PNG so far. Reflected in a scoreline, 12 points to nil. They're going to have to figure how they deal with Justin Nolan. He's making too many yards. Another, another set of six. Emmanuel Wayne drives it in. Still playing with the PNG Hunters. That Go, development wow. side that has done so much. Wellington Albert now has it's moved to Olam. Justin Olam. Yeah, penalty. And off the ball. Off the ball, late hit. Light contact. Yeah, just hauling. Do you normally see that type of contact on the smallest man on the field? Not the biggest man on the field. I wasn't really... You know, Don't didn't, poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. He didn't put a shot really on him, just pushed him over. You're going to give a penalty away, make sure you do. Yeah, give, make yeah, sure exactly you do put a shot on him. Exactly my thoughts. <laughs> Emmanuel Wayne drives it in. Edwin Ipape, four to his left, but more to his right. And that's the way he's got to go now. Spins it out to Labour. They're making numbers on that right-hand side or attempting to. Nenny McDonald He's going to take some grappling and holding as he pushes. Look how many Wells players are there. He's trying to hold him up, and they do hold him up. The ball comes out. Alex Johnson says thank you. Elliot, you need to clean up in the What's the referee given here? Is it he said he was held up? No, he's yeah, given a penalty. Penalty, penalty to Papua New Guinea. He just said you've got to clean up in the ruck. So another set, basically. Six more tackles. 
And Wellington Albert will lead the charge. There'll be some sore bodies amongst those Wales players from this World Cup already. And they're going to get sorer as the night goes on. Here comes Lamb. They'll be happy to tackle him. He's one of the smaller fellas. It's been a very physical group, hasn't it, for Wales? You know, Tom Cook guys in Papua New Guinea. Ipape goes short with a pass. Great, great pass, hasn't he, Pape? Now it comes again. Spins it out towards Leibut. Leibut inside for Johnston. Johnston's lost the ball. Yeah, they're overplaying it a little bit. Papua New Guinea just overplaying it, thinking that they want to score on every, uh, on every play. Yeah, that play was telegraphed. They were sitting up for that. They, no matter what, they were going to put that on. In reality, they should have been just taking one in, sitting up for their last play and trying to get it back to back set. This is the group that's given us some real, real moments, hasn't it? The Welsh performance in this group. That heartbreaking defeat against the Cook Isles. The fact that they touched, pushed Tonga so far. The two tries they conceded just before half time did for them that day. And here they are in the final group. I know when the group, uh, when they when they had the draw, Buckingham Palace, all those years ago now. And they, they came out with this group. John Keir immediately said, the group of death. Because it's going to be tough. And it has been tough. But they've been up for the fight. It's seen the best games as well. Yeah, I think so. It's been an exciting yeah. group. Yeah. Absolutely. Papua New Guinea, Tonga. I mean, Papua New Guinea, very unfortunate not to be going through as group yeah, leaders, aren't they, they are. if they win oh, here tonight? Yeah. Because... They maybe could and should have won against Tonga in their opening match. Here's Walker, Anthony Walker, bowling it forward. Wales have got a bit of a bit of foot, foothold inside their opponent's half, but they've reached the end of the count again, and Alls with a kick too far. The catch on the full means that again it's a tap back on the 20 and a seven tackle restart here for Papua New Guinea. Yeah, you know, it's, you, you just can't do that. It's a poor kick. You know, the conditions are dreadful. They're throwing the ground into the corner, really, really put some hang time on it, put some pressure on the catcher, too easy. And look where they are already, you know, a couple of, a couple of targets in the halfway line. The part-timers, they've been battered by Tonga, they've been battered by Cook Islands physically. How difficult is it to lift it again for a third game against a team who are going to bat you all over again? Searching down the blind side with Ipape. Worst defence recovers. Bailey Antrobus amongst those to get the telling touch in. Lay, Laybutt. Now it's with Lamb. Just trying to burst through the middle again here. Up together now, Gavin. Still got tackles in the back. Two to go here for PNG. Lachlan Lamb looking to weave a bit of magic again. Johnston, he's a threat. 30 tries in the NRL last year. That's how much of a threat he is. It's picked up by Nutlick. It's Lamb who's going to kick it. It's a greasy ball that hangs high in the air. There's a scramble and there's a knock on. That's a difference. You know, on a kick on the last tackle, just hangs it up there. Good communication and they nearly get it. And you see that Lee Leopard's connection there. Yeah. Lamb kicking it across to Nene McDonald. We saw this the other night. We've got the knock back, try scored off the back of it. We'll expect to see that again this tournament. They'll be hoping to rock Six Super miles. League next year, wouldn't they? Those two, <laughs> Nelly McDonald, Lachlan Lamb, Edwin Ipape as well. Looking forward to see them in the top flight next year. I think Ipape's been impressive, hasn't he? Yeah. Good distribution, he, he's quick. Been brilliant all year. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant yeah. all year. Yeah. Forzard. He's going to have a little dabble again at dummy half. Josh Ralph just ran past him. So this is Rodri Lloyd. Searching down the middle, setting a platform Everyone here for them to Watch work off. Right Two tackles to go, Fossard again. It's with Burke, who bounces in. He's driving it well. He's going to be held up, can't get the offload away. Arms pinned. So has to get up and play. And now it comes to Ralph. Ralph on the inside. They're trying something a little adventurous here. Walker helps it on its way. It's into the foot of all to slides that kick. Really good kick into the in-goal area. Yeah, better, better kick to finish this set. Another reset. Out of the heavens open once again. Fortunate as well, you know, a little bit off the cuff. But actually, as you were saying before, Jiffy, Putting the ball on the ground is going to ask a lot more questions. It's a frightening thing. You've played in these conditions before. Yeah. You know you know what can happen in that backfield. 
The ball never goes where you want it to go. Well, the dropper is not exactly... I think that was a bit of a, a, a scrubbed kick there, so Wales get possession in better position than they might have been. Elliot Keir winning his 30th cap, by the way. He draws level with our studio guest Ian Watson and Jordan James tonight in terms of number of caps won for Wales. Bailey Antrobus drives it in. Rhys Williams winning his 33rd tonight. He extends his record. Walker looking to pull it back. There's the kick towards the corner. Here's Kyle Evans on the chase. And it bounced out again off of Papua New Guinea. No, came last off Welsh hands. That's unlucky. So it will be a tap back on the 20. Yeah, that's very unlucky. Good early kick because of a narrow defensive yeah. line. Right to the foot. Nearly caught, I think he had a chance, didn't he? Yeah, I tell you what, Evans was flying there. If that ball was a little bit longer, because he still had a good 5, 10 metres to work to that sideline. Bolts had to just put that ball just a little bit longer. I think we would have seen Wales first try. Oh, these are fantastic conditions for rugby league, aren't they? <laughs> Brilliant conditions. Pouring down. You can hear it hammering on the roof now. That's how hard the rain is. Oh, it's on. Good well, they're serving up some brilliant entertainment week. here because this is fantastic, absolutely fantastic from Jimmy Notlick. The winger saw a gap, thought I'll have a go, and Jimmy Notlick, only his second international appearance, scores his first Papua New Guinean try, and he sparked a party in Mount Hagen and Port Moresby. Papua New Guinea, 16-0 up. And this is what happens when you play that patient game and when you go through the middle of the team, you start to tire out the players in the middle of the park. And a number of those Welsh players are starting to get tired, acting half runs, arcing in behind the ruck, getting just identifying those tired players and a player like this, too quick. How fast is he? Fast enough. Yeah, that was just once he broke the first line, there was no catching him. Between two, two tired forwards, quick top, and he's away. There's no one catching him. He was, he was dancing through the raindrops there, wasn't he? Yes. Terrific stuff. I think he enjoyed that moment. Jimmy Nutlick, remember the name. He could be a threat against England on Saturday. The threat you have as a Welshman, you've got to. Do you squeeze your line in and offer them the, the outside? Yeah, that was just poor defence, to be honest. You know, the two pro forwards, it, it, the pace caught them out a little bit. They were grasping at thin air. And then once he broke the first line, unfortunately, no chance of standing full back. And uh, John's identified, John Kerr's identified that, Welsh head coach. Made his swaps. Fresh legs are on there now. Rhys Martin with this conversion attempt and it's his third success of the night 18 points to nil his 10th success of the tournament and Jimmy Nutlick still glowing after this moment good speed that's a fantastic try it's an absolutely fantastic try we've, uh, we've seen this tournament turn up some stars some expected some unexpected I don't think too many would have known Jimmy Nutlick's name outside the western suburbs Magpies but we all know his name now. And that's one of the jobs of the outside back, those early carries. They're told, they're taught to run at the A defenders. Get him behind the ruck, because if anyone's going to be lazy, it's going to be there. So the Welsh, their dreams are sodden at the moment. Their hearts are breaking, but can they show the character to at least get back into this game? They haven't won a World Cup match. For such a long time. Referees warned them, you know, got to be cleaner in the ruck. Unfortunately, they're not listening and they get an easy yardage. 22 years, back to 2000. I think Jonathan Davis was almost still playing. No. We're in the Welsh last one again on this stage. Rhys Martin. Just solidly in. The Pape, a dummy half, waiting patiently to deliver back towards the middle again and Alec and taken on again carried in this is Simbican who's on the field from the interchange bench here's Lachlan Lamb who's uh, having a little wander there to see what he might discover it's Nene MacDonald who's left the ball behind and dropped on gratefully by Ollie Holtz yeah. 
Looking for the inside support runner. You're not always looking for the for the offload even in these conditions. Yeah, Papua New Guinea are guilty of anything tonight, and that's just overplaying in a couple of instances. The score tries if they just be a little more patient. The tries they scored have been direct, haven't they? Elliot three. Keir bounces back to his feet. Wales take the charge on again. By the way, if you are still working on your calculator, it's now 40 points that Wales have to score. It was it was unlikely before we started. It's it's getting less and less likely as the night goes on. Kick downfield from Fozard. Just safely done by Alex Johnston. Immediately a threat when he picks it up. The Welsh are aware of that, so into his rib cage as quick as they can. Led by Will Evans. Kyle Evans also working hard on that side. It's a quick pickup for Lachlan Lamb. Now it's Olam, Justin Olam. Ipapi. They are struggling to keep up with the play the balls wheels are. They're so quick. Always on the front foot. Simbican from the Redcliffe Dolphins. Jeremiah Simbican wants to get up and play it. Ipapi will take it on. Dan Russell, who's also uh, on for the interchange bench. Oh. And it's a penalty, ball steal. So Papua New Guinea, I'm sure, will select to go for another set here, rather it's all, than kick for goal. Yeah, it's all too obvious at the moment. They're just struggling with the speed of Papua New Guinea's. Play the balls, what happens then? You're just struggling, you're just trying to hold on. And that's when you start putting your hands in the ruck. Simicum, up towards the 10. Ipape. Looking to deliver back on the inside for Russell and Lamb and Lamb goes further left to Putt. And this time there's no way through for Nixon Putt. In Papi goes back towards Russell and he's gonna get there. Ball on the whitewash. That's good enough. Fourth try for Papi New Guinea. 22 points to nil. They lead now. They are putting on a show here, Papi New Guinea. They are putting on a real show. They're, they're sending out a message to the rest of this tournament. We were talking about England, Australia, New Zealand, and Tonga and Samoa before the tournament began. Do we have to put Papua New Guinea in that reckoning now? Well, it'll, be a, it'll be a tougher game than they've had so far. England, there's the penalty once again. Feel the position, I think it's on Russell. So he comes up, you know, it's a good line and he just stretches over. Simple try, not enough line speed there, but they're out on their feet at the moment, whereas the, sp the, the speed of the play of the balls, they just cannot cope. And they had great shape to play just before that. Papua New Guinea was spreading out to the left. The Welsh defence all come across to their right, which left a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and thin numbers in the middle of the park. And that's where Russell capitalised and was able to just get that momentum. And he's got long arms. We you know what it was like, Rob, you know, when, when the forwards are so dominant, you know, the half-back's just in an armchair ride. Right? They're picking the holes, they're picking the, you know, the least numbers on the defensive side. So it's just, it's a walk in a park, you know, for the of quality of Lamb and Labert. Rhys Martin just settling again. He's looked pretty good with the boots so far tonight, hasn't he? Despite the slippery conditions, and over it goes again. 24 points to nil for Papua New Guinea. 30 minutes played. I tell you what, this World Cup, we've seen some one-sided scorelines in the early stages. But I think we're in for an absolute barnstorming quarterfinals. Yeah, I think you're going to get that in every, you know, in every sport, you know, in the qualifying rounds, the better sides against the, you know, not, not so talented sides. But, you know, no, I think the quarterfinals, it gets a little bit serious. And I think the semi-finals, you know, they're going to be classic games. So Fossard gets the kick away. We are enjoying the show that Papua New Guinea are putting on here tonight. Playing with a touch of class. Ipapi. From that initial drive will pick up and look left again. They've got a bit of depth in this Papua New Guinean squad as well. Some star players sprinkled in amongst some real endeavour. Simbican picks up and goes left. Here's Nixon Putts with a good offload. Taken on again by Alec. They just keep moving, they keep flowing. It's with Labour and good hands, but they're not good hands. The ball's gone to ground, and Wales will get a bit of relief here with the ball back again. Yeah, a little bit of overplay there by Papua New Guinea, but I've got to say, I'm absolutely loving what the Papua New Guinean halves are doing at the moment. 
The ball doesn't go to hand, but the opportunities are there. Lachlan Lamb is just moving everyone around, all of their big forwards the around the, the park boys. like a, a master chess player. And Labour is just watching him, talking to him all the time, oh, just setting up those next plays. Lachlan Lamb had everything set up on this left-hand okay. side. Labour had everything set the on the right-hand side. They're doing a great job, generally great. being generals in the middle of the park. Thanks. Here's Will Evans, who's on his way to witness next year. Just had a year at Whitehaven. Young player of the year there, but he's, um, he's on his move to John Kerr's witness. Joining his, uh, his national coach at domestic level. Kyle Evans, who knows where he will be. Surely he'll be somewhere with what he's shown in this World Cup. Reese Evans with the offload. Wales trying to just pick up yards here if they can. Don't forget the women's tournament kicks off tomorrow as well. In a couple of days' time, the wheelchair tournament kicks off too. The World Cup is getting really serious now. Men's quarterfinals, women's wheelchair. The festival is rolling on. Here is Antrobus. 20 metres out and pushed back an extra five. Elliot Keir at dummy half. Inside for Ollie Olds. Olds now to Ralph. Ralph back again. Aikens gets it away. This is good. Will Evans on this right hand side. Will Evans too tight to the touchline to try and pass to Kyle. Kyle Evans now will pick it up. The best position the Welsh have had for a long, long time, but they're on the last. Josh Ralph puts it high, too high. Easy take for the Papua New Guineans. And because it's a, a tap restart, they can get on with it as quickly as they can. And they are suddenly attacking from a defensive position. Nenny McDonald eventually tackled, but on the halfway line, and they've got yeah. another six tackles to go. Yeah, that's smart play for Nenny McDonald. He went back, secured the ball in goal, and then run straight up and got the quick uh, penalty up. Uh, quick tap. And that's everything that they want. That great set by Wales, and they're now on the back foot once again. Again, it's poor execution on the kick. That's all it is. It gives them opportunity on the front foot, and here they are once again. There's Ty put down. The winger from the right-hand side. And then smash down the middle, Papua New Guinea take it. Oh, Lachlan Lamb, good, good carry into the line. Nixon put, and it's gone away, and knock off. And again, you know, they're just forcing the pass now. They, you know, they are. You know, they got, they got a 24-point cushion. So you can afford to do that. But just pushing the pass. There's a. You should hit the ground here. He tries to get a miracle pass away. In traffic, scrum for Wales. I mean, this is something that they've got to be considering, being that, yes, yeah, more, 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 more than likely that they're going to be facing England. You can't do that against England. England will capitalise. You, you don't get many option, opportunities against those bigger teams. Papua New Guinea are going to have to come up with better results than that. I think, I think against England, though, they'll, they'll have to try and get some offloads in because I think they might be dominated physically up front by England forward so they will have to try and get the offloads in but hopefully for them maybe it'll be better conditions on Saturday in Wigan be much worse in Wigan don't count on it Saturday <laughs> afternoon here's Elliot Keir Wigan. isn't there a storm coming good offload by Keir uh, Antrobus Antrobus making a break a dash a dash from Antrobus has taken Wales inside the Papua New Guinea and a half He's been impressive this time. Back they come again. Robbery Lloyd captured by three Papua New Guinean defenders. Matty Fossard slapping his hands, wants to get on with this. Another set of six for the Welsh. They've got a chance to build some pressure on their opponent's line. Antrobus again with a carry. Short penalty. High. Well, it's another set of six. They're going to take a tap and run it, or at the very least kick to touch. They're not going to kick for goal here. Yeah, Sutton's not messing about. He's very consistent. That's all you want, isn't it? Any infringement in the in attack area is a, another set. Well, here we go. Here we go. Can Wales post something here? Fleming with the initial drive. He's put down. The Featherstone prop forward. Fossard picks up, comes to this right-hand side again. Connor Davis is on the field. He's involved there, but Wales can't find the key to the door on that occasion. Slams oh, shot in their hold. face. Fossard. Here's Ralph. Edwin. Edwin. Ralph now across the line. A straightforward effort from Fleming again. All Marcus guts and determination. But met by that irresistible force of the Papua New Guinean defence. 
It's left, it's high. Is great. it? Oh, on holds. Great, de great defence, good line speed. Fossard again. Work back on the inside, Connor Davis. Well, they're on the last again here. They're on the last. Fossard flicks it back to Ralph. Ralph, little kick into the end goal area. It's yeah. spilled. It's offside. It's a penalty at the least here. Penalty yep. at the least here for Wells. It is. So another chance to attack this line. That's their go-to play tonight. They're putting the ball on the ground with grubber kicks. Both Olds and Ralph are being, being, are being jumped out on by That's their the Papua New Guinean defence. The They're giving no, getting no time on the ball, but when you jump out on a player like that, if they can just dribble well, the ball in behind, sure you're going to have space sure in behind there like you've seen the last couple of times. Here they go again. Oh, not with a pass like that. You can start with something a little sharper than that, but they've kept possession. That's the main thing at this stage. Uh, no, they've not. They've lost. Oh, it's another, no, it's penalty. another penalty. It's another penalty. Well, they're racking up. How many how many tackles have they had on this Papua New Guinea line? And here come a few more. Driven in by Chester Butler. Butler trying to force his way over. Just held up short. Fossard now comes out next. It's with Ralph. They've got a bit of room on this right-hand side. Oh, my word. My word. Well, they saw daylight and suddenly went all dark again. Because Jimmy Notley was there with that big shoulder. Yeah, too early in the tackle going to go wide. You've got to come in, uh, come in from the touchline. Once he's caught there, he has absolutely no chance. That's a lonely place to be, I can tell you that. Carl Evans there. You're just an own coming across. Nutlick. He's got no room. There's no option for him. He can't even chuck it back over the top with a pass. Yeah, you're right, Jeffy. You've got to earn the right to go wide. That means holding the defence. Kyle Evans would have seen all that in slow motion, wouldn't he? Yeah. As the, the big frame of Jimmy Nutlick came flying at him with his shoulder. He is an athlete. He is a specimen, is Kyle Evans. Yeah, he is. He's good. But, you know, good luck with that. Yeah. Played in this, uh, in this town, as we said before, for Doncaster Rugby Union, before his switch. Francis Cummings, the assistant coach at uh, Wakefield last year, had done a bit of coaching at Doncaster Rugby Union, recommended him, Wakefield signed him, he did a job, he's been doing a job for Wales in this World Cup as well. Papi New Guinea, last 30 seconds of this half, should finish the session with ball in hand, unless, of course, it's kicked over the top by Ipape. Williams carefully picks it up. It's uh, with <laughs> Caleb Aikens, yeah, who thanks. might have said Marcus thank you very much thanks for that. <laughs> to uh, Reese Williams for that pass. Greasy ball and big thunderous monsters coming at him. <laughs> but, uh, he kept a hold. hold. Go to Edward, not there, so Edward. Wales Edward. in the last embers of this Jeff, first period. Hold. Go three. Well, our clock says time up, but we've not heard the hooter yet. Still three. Still playing, still playing. <laughs> now we hear the hooter. That will be that. Well, if there were any doubts before, if there was a glimmer of a hope for the Welsh before the night began, that's gone. But we can sit back and enjoy this very, very good Papua New Guinean team doing what they do best, running hard, scoring tries. And we pose the question, what are they like on a wet Monday night in Doncaster? Turns out not too bad. Yeah, they run hard. The public in your force will always run hard. And, and if they win that just contact tackle area, the halfbacks will have a good afternoon, a good, a good evening. And that's what's happened so far. They've been very, very clinical with good control rugby league. So Papua New Guinea, 24 points to nil. I think we're going to hear from their skipper, Reese Martin, right now, who's uh, down there with Damien Johnson. Reese, very impressive in the first half. Did BNG bring their A game? Um, yeah, we, we were coming here to, to turn up aggressively and play our style of footy, but just got to fix up a few uh, errors there, so we're building a bit more pressure, but um, yeah, we're playing some good footy. Is it all about discipline now, building the combinations with a one eye on the quarterfinal? Yeah, definitely, mate. We just need to stick to our game plan. Uh, I've been speaking it all week that these guys will turn up no matter what, and um, we just got to hold the ball and build pressure. Thanks, Reese. Thank you. Elliot Keir is here, the, uh, the Welsh captain. Elliot, a, a mountain to climb. They've been pretty good PNG today. Uh, yeah, we just kind of need to look after the ball a bit better, I think. The conditions, we need to just play the conditions a bit better. Kicking game a bit off as well? Yeah, we're a few light mishaps there. Something we need to fix up. Thanks a lot. Yeah.
Elliot Keir. Yeah, big wins yesterday for Tonga and Samoa. That is Group A. The final standings, England top of the group. Samoa qualify in second place behind England. They are into the quarterfinals. France and Greece go out. And Group D, as it stands, Papua New Guinea leading here at halftime, 24 points to nil against Wales. Tonga, they are the group winners after that demolition of the Cook Islands, and it will be a Tonga-Samoa blockbuster quarter-final next Sunday in Warrington. That is mouth-watering. Papua New Guinea are on course to face England on Saturday in Wigan. Well, there is the Papua New Guinea dressing room head coach Stanley Tepend. Knows his team are 40 minutes away from a quarter final berth with England, a team that they lost to five years ago at the same stage. It's just a question of execution here in the final 40 minutes at Doncaster. They have built a very commanding lead here in the first half. As for the Welsh, well, what do they do? How do they turn this around? John Keir, the head coach, can he work some kind of miracle? Can he inspire these players to go above and beyond what they've already produced? It's a mammoth task. They need to win by 22 points to get through to the quarter-final. Still raining here in Doncaster, not quite as heavy. It was hammering on the roof during the first half. The pitch has held up very well, though. A slick handling night, so there's been a few errors there from both sides, but I think this is the weather for the evening here. Some terrific costumes on Halloween night. That's the Papua New Guinean fan club in full voice they've been this evening. They look terrific. Welsh leaving the dressing room for the second half in Doncaster. They haven't won a World Cup match for 22 years. Can they somehow turn it round here in the second half? A reminder that tomorrow the women's competition kicks off with a double header in Leeds, England against Brazil. Papua New Guinea's women's team in action against Canada. Yeah. There's the two teams coming out here for the second half here in Doncaster as the rain continues to pour down. It's a very lively crowd here. Forty minutes left of the group stages in the men's competition at Rugby League World Cup 2021. Let's get over to our commentary team for the second half. Robbie Hunter-Paul, Jonathan Davis, and first of all, Dave Woods. Well, once more into the breach for the Welsh right. here. Can the Dragons roll a little in this second half, produce a little bit of flame to just end at this tournament with something to remember, or does it carry on being a Papua New Guinean carnival here? They have played so well in building up that 24-0 lead. And we are so excited because it feels like the World Cup starts 
from tomorrow. We've, we've had the men's group games and there's been some one-sided matches. There's been some memorable games as well. But tomorrow the Women's World Cup kicks off and then the wheelchair and then the quarterfinals at the weekend. It is uh, delicious, so mouth-watering. But we've got 40 minutes here to enjoy before we get on to that. Ipape had a dummy half. Papua New Guinea tackle, looking to drive forward again. Simbikan will climb to his feet and play it. Here comes Labour. Labour gets the kick away, but a kick pressure on him from Fossard. Oh, that's a brilliant kick because it's bounced just a foot inside. It was um, it was left by Reese Williams because he thought it was going to go out on the full, but it's not. It's bounced and Wales will get it, but only 10 from their own line. You know, the simple skill there is just to put your foot over the line and touch the ball. You don't even have to catch it. Put your foot over the line and just touch it, and the ball's out. Yeah. no tackles. One of the best answers you've ever given, actually. Yeah, there, 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 there. <laughs> yeah. And if you do catch with your foot in play, you're going to get smashed into. Here, Edwards. <laughs> go on. Uh, let's let's go down to the touchline because I think uh, David Johnson is rather wet and bedraggled at the moment. As uh, oh, hang on, before we do, let's just watch Papua New Guinea trying to launch another attack here. Lenny McDonald. Surrender. So. Let's watch now. this play out here, here. because oh, PNG could be poised. They've got six tackles to have a go. Dan Russell driving it in. Chester, gotta let go. Into dummy half goes go Ipape back. again. Lining That's up on that left hand running. side. Lamb drops it back on the inside. Put Rodri, with the effort. Square. Welsh with the response. Ipape. Outside. Delivering again, another big burst of energy. It's over the line as he got it down. No, he's held up. Yeah, good tackle. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's always a test of a defensive hard, isn't it? Wait for the whistle. Denying efforts like that. So here they come again. Laybutt, Martin, he's lost the ball. Wales have it back. Stolen again. Another penalty. Another penalty. Pressure's mounting. It's a tough one, man. Yeah, two Because you're taught to lock the ball up. Yeah, two in the tackle there. Also. So, Papua New Guinea Connor, up setting up base camp here as they look to climb another mountain and get themselves another try. It's into the hands of Johnston. Good tackle, that is. But that, that has been lost. One on one and the referee two. says one on one. And he's given head and feed to Papua New Guinea. So Welsh hands on that legally, but they knocked it forward. I mean, it's some great defence by Wales. You know, they're hustling, they're moving, they're getting across in the space, and Papua New Guinea oh, are testing them. They're hitting the lead runner, they're hitting the guy out the back, and Wales still haven't come unstuck. But how many back-to-back -back sets back. can you defend? Well, this is draining energy, isn't it? Early in the second half, the Wells can ill afford to have that energy drained. They need every ounce to get themselves through the rest of this game. Here's Olam, and he's going to be dragged down just short. Gets up and plays. Here comes another wave of attack. Ipape makes himself a fairly easy target for those Welsh defenders, and that's a little bit of a defensive win for Wales, but it doesn't count for much because Papua New Guinea come back again. Labut trying to put the footwork on. They're not buying it, they're not buying it. In with the tackles. Ipape switching left again. Big effort from Simbikin. Crash to the ground, but they're getting closer and closer. Ipape wants more. Spinning it to Labut. Labut throws it back to Lamb. Lamb to the fullback Johnston, who's in the line. Tackle. Good defensive effort from Kia. Good tackle by Kia. Back it comes to Ty. Maybe a little greedy and trying to go for himself. Play the ball for the worst. So, he's been on tenter hooks for a few minutes now. Damien Johnson, what, is, what have they been telling you? <laughs> Soaking wet down here, as you say, Dave. Didn't know you cared, actually. Uh, John Kia at half time. Happy with the defensive effort, particularly on the goal line. And we've seen uh, evidence of that at the start of this uh, second half. Need to be better with the ball, uh, finish our sets more strongly. Uh, PNG, delighted with the first half performance. Keep running hard, we've defended well as well. Uh, and keep them to nil, that would be such a boost going into the quarter-final. Well, 
there's a big defensive effort from Papua New Guinea. Wales can't get off the line. They're pushed back behind their line. It means they have to drop out underneath their sticks. It means all things being equal. And remember, this is a very wet night, but Papua New Guinea should get the ball back here. Yeah, another set. Can't imagine they're going to go short here as well. Just bang it as long as you can. They're taking as long as they can. There's a shot clock which tells them they've only five more seconds to take this, but they're taking as long as they can to get the oxygen back in the lungs because it's another wave of Papua New Guinean attack led by Dan Russell. The whole of this second half so far seems to have been played in this patch of grass. Papua New Guinea haven't yet added to the half-time score, but they're threatening again. Ipape comes back towards the middle and Alec, Jacob Alec, Ipape skids it left, Lamb, and he's going to reach, as he? No, he's not, no, he's not, oh, he's not far away, but he's not going to be able to put the ball down. Good effort from the Welsh defence. Another big crash, bang, wallop effort, and this time it is Nixon Putt who gets over the line to score. There was a sense of inevitability about all of that. The Welsh can defend, but for how long can they defend? Well, in the end, they run out of juice, and Nixon Butt is there to force his way over. And that's right, it becomes an energy game at the end of the day. Too much thrown out Wales. Wales were taking wave after wave, sucking it all in, but at some point, it's, something's got to give. There, we saw it in the first half. Nixon Putt just running that big, hard line, using his power. And this is, uh, this is a great example of, you know, not only are they coming out here to be strong uh, with the ball in hand, but also big, strong defensively as well. Oh, big, that's, a, that's a big carry. You have a lot to do put. You know, same as similar to his first strike, just dynamic power. But again, you know, on, when, he got, when he got the turnover to, to get the, run the ball out, unfortunately, when you run too high against the Papua New Guinea, they get below you, they hold you up and they all drive you back. You've got to go and try and hit the deck as soon as you can. We were talking about them. They're low to the ground, especially guys like Nixon Putt. He's, he's a short squat type of player, slow centre of gravity, but extremely powerful. We travelled to Papua New Guinea when uh, the spear tackle was legal. <laughs> and let me tell you, that was fun over there. <laughs> the grounds are hard. Grounds you are a little hard, You yeah. were drilled into it. There goes Martin with kick number five, five out of five, 30 points to nil. And uh, Nixon Potts, the latest try scorer, Stanley Tepen, the coach there. What a good job he's doing. He's the assistant coach of the Hunter Mariners. He was assistant to Michael Marum at the World Cup five years ago, but uh, Michael Marum's gone into politics. So Stanley Tepen has taken over and he's doing a good job. I think he had a word at them at half time. There's been no push passes in this opening 10 minutes of the game. Everything's been kept up tight, they've been patient, and they're going to get their rewards. A simple thing, the pack, the Papua New Guinea pack is, is dominant. So why, in, in these conditions, try and push passes? They're just going direct, they're playing, they've got, they, they get an easy yardage, good kicking game, they're having the ball back in the, in the Welsh half. You cannot understand how many parties they'll be going on in Papua New Guinea at the moment. And if you are watching us in Papua New Guinea, I hope you're really enjoying this. They, they are so passionate about this sport. So many isolated tribes within the country who'll walk for days just to find a television set to watch a game when they know their heroes are playing. And so many different languages spoken in that country. I think it's over 200, over 300 languages. I know we talked to Rhys Martin at last World Cup and he was saying some of the boys speak different languages to each other within the squad. But they're all speaking the same language at the moment. It's the language of rugby league. To, to use an awful cliche. In the language of winning. I was wondering how you're going to get up to that. But they are fluent. They are fluent as well. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you did. Go to. Oh, there's a moment, there's a moment. Here comes Antrobus for Wales. In to dummy half goes Ollie Olds. Just smashed in by Dan Fleming. Admire the effort by these Welsh players. They're on a hiding to nothing at the moment. Ralph goes right, Aiken spins it out. Here's Will Evans. Just a little Last bit there, you know, the pass is just on the Hold side of him. You've got to check to take it. You know, when you're running against Go a tough defence, you've got to have the ball line. in front. Little things make such a big difference. 
kick downfield will find Roderick Ty, an eager collector of that bouncing ball. And uh, runs it back. Maddie, clear it now. They're just like missiles, aren't they? They just move at speed, flying rocks, boulders bouncing down the field. Alex Johnson. Could have been a top level yeah, cricketer, Alex square. Johnson, but glad he's chosen no, rugby league because he would have been playing cricket on a night like this, would he? He runs, he runs well, Gary doesn't he? Knocking him behind Hold the ruck every yeah, time. He does. Wesser Tenza making his debut tonight in at dummy half. Is Wesser. 30 years Stand of age, out. it's been a long Wait time here, coming, Maddie. but he's pulled on that famous shirt tonight Still. for the very first time. Oh, he'll be loving it. Last tackle, Bailey. Roll out. He's jogging over into oh, position. Right Tenza last. again. Here's Labour. Labour, high, Jacob. huge, Jacob. huge. Aikens underneath it, but he's taken it well. <laughs> Great take, that is, under pressure. That's a lonely place to be, when all you can see in your peripheral vision is those yellow jumpers coming at you. And the foot, you can, all you can hear is the footsteps, Jeffy. They've not got out of their own half, have they? No, they haven't. In the second half. Well, they may be now, because they've got a penalty. Very short. Some of the numbers are stacking up. Over a 1,000 metres that Papua New Guinea have made now. Compare that with the 500 that Wales have made so far. Yeah, and the big one, you know, play the ball in the opposition 20 metres. Papua New Guinea 37, Wales 6. That just shows the dominance. Half of the foot. Go, no tackles. So Wales looking to see if they can venture inside their opponent's half for the first time here tonight. Well, to in the second half, at least. In. Here's Go Fossard. On. An offer by Ralph, and then he'll decide to try and take them on himself. And Lachlan up, Wester all the some way. Robust defence oh, coming so in. Fossard. Well, they've Wester got a bit of it. bit of a foothold now. Hold. Bit of a foothold, Go and three. with. Um, Tackles to go. What can they make of it? Connor Davis, who's on for the interchange bench. Aikens pushing off a couple of those defenders. Here comes Connor Davis again. Immediately wrapped around. Two to go. Two plays to go. Tackle four. Back it up, Connor. Connor Davis is trying to steal a yard or two there. The referee says go back and play it where you were tattled. Here's Ralph. Still four. Really put down. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, last get off him. <laughs> get off him. Let him play the ball. Now they go. Little dummy shown by Ralph. Ralph with a kick. Watch Johnston out. off him. Here we go. Here we go. But Johnston go suddenly one. finds players in front of him and just as well. Go one, you're on. It all seems a bit rushed, doesn't it, from Wales' point of view? Yeah, and yeah, it first, wasn't placed. No, first you drive, you know. That, that. They've just been beating every department. You've got to try and create something and make a defence, make a mistake, but they just haven't got, you know, those, that quick play the ball or the, the guy at half back to do it. 27 minutes to play. Papua New Guinea looking to pile on the pressure to remind you or to tell you if you weren't with us in the first half. They will be playing against England at Wigan. 2.30 kickoff on Saturday Chester. afternoon. Marcus That's going to be a great occasion, no, last, really is. Like last Chester. play. Here comes the kick Clear. from Lachlan Lamb. Underneath it, it's taken superbly oh, well. Yeah. Is that Kyle Evans on that far side? And here he comes. Wow, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Fantastic by Evans. Still going, still going. Oh, great run. There's his partner, enjoying the moment. Williams just inside the PNG half. Antrobus runs it hard again. Matty Bozard stands and waits at Dunny half. Oh, a bit of a juggle, but they keep a hold. Lloyd, I think it was, who's just about kept a hold of it. So the Welsh again have a bit of a platform here. What can they make of it? It's a, a reach and a take by Ralph. He's done well there. Difficult pass to take. Just testing this Papua New Guinea defence. Yeah, just needed some of the run the angle there. The pass had beaten the, the defender. Just needed some of the cut back. Ollie Olds trying to slide it through. It ricochets. It's knocked on. Wales will get it back here. They'll get the ball back and they're 
fewer than 20 yards away from their opponent's line. Well, this will be good for Wales because they're not under pressure. They're out, out of their own 20 metre. They're going to have patience now and just yeah, go through their, their drills in training. If it doesn't come, then they've got to try and get a repeat set and just keep them here for a little bit. John Keir barking down the orders. The Wales touchdown. getting a little excited. Kyle. I tell you what, wasn't that a Kyle great bit of, bit of skill that started that set with Kyle Evans just Evans. catching the ball yeah. on the on the hop. The Am I right in thinking that he's a free yeah, agent at the moment? Off. Yes, he is. He's, uh, I tell you what, Super League clubs line up, championship clubs line up. Three appearances for Wakefield last year. He's almost played more for Wales than he has in Super League. Well, here come Wales. What can they put on here? Callum Aikins at dummy half. Can they create something to remember this tournament by? Less than 10 now. Fossard spinning it to that right-hand side. Old helps it off. Over the top it goes. Oh, it's picked up by Evans. Kyle Evans eventually. Will Evans nearly got there. But it's Kyle Evans who picks it up. In the gloom and the rain at Doncaster. The Welsh... Trying to create a bit of sunshine. Ralph again, going left. Loads of tackles. Fossard slips in at dummy half. Ralph picks it up. Quick hands, quick hands from Olds. Too quick for Antrobus. And Reese Martin will bring it clear for Papua New Guinea. They've got to switch on now. He's 10. Hold. Marcus Square, Caleb. Guys, you're First flick was good. It was a catch that yeah. just let them down. There's no full back at home for Wales no. Quick, big they kick and chase. They could be in here. You're only not, just getting back. They're not kicked and chased since 1988, Jonathan. That's, 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 that's your, your no, era. No way. There's no, why, why shouldn't they? There's no full back at all for the first two tackles. Put a long kick and you score. Just it Especially when you've got someone like Nucklick in your team as well. <laughs> just it all up. You don't need to kick and chase when you've got just it all up. We are chariots, man. Dragging them through. Go three. So Papua New Guinea Bailey, find themselves 20 metres away. Go it's Wessa Tenza. Lachlan go Lamb back on the inside to kick that kick from the uh, yeah. Labert, the standoff, and it's just about scrambled to safety. Oh, oh no, no, came last off Papua New Guinea, so it'll be a tap back on the 20. That was, that was a kick and chase. That was a kick and chase. There we are, look, nearly scored, yeah. nearly scored. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a penalty, it's a penalty. It's not a... It's a penalty for a, an impediment uh, in the chase yeah, there. The yeah, good read by Kyle Labor there. You could see Reese Martin was just getting upstream, wanting him to kick, so he put the ball in behind. He was able to draw defenders to him, get the penalty. But just look how far they've come with our set. Off the foot. Yeah, it was a, a kick by Wales, 20, instead of yeah. 20 metres, 10 no, metres no, from no. the Welsh line. Well, this will be a test for that Welsh defence because Papua New Guinea are in the mood oh, for more points here. Wessa Tenza spinning it out of dummy half. This might be his World Cup tonight right here, but that was poor shift to the left-hand side. Yeah, poor pass. He was so clinical, you know, so Sydney. That left-hand attack for so Sydney, so, so good. They just lost their shape a yeah. little bit here. They didn't have any lead runners. Everybody was on the same wave. Pl plenty of numbers as well. And this isn't the condition to do a three-man cutout no, pass. No. <laughs> well, I, was, I was going to ask you to. Especially if you put it behind the player. The, the first half, Papua New Guinea looked fantastic. They looked like, right, they're ready for that challenge against England. Can you play yourself out of form in a game? Can you lose a bit of confidence because you lose a bit of shape? I think you get a bit looser, you know, the conditions. You're 30 points up. And the scoreline, yeah. yeah a scoreline, you're just going to throw passes you wouldn't throw normally. Different combinations come in. Combinations where, you know... Step in. What at, the, at this point in time, the PNG coaching staff they're thinking about their next game. Yeah, and they won't be. They can't not make enforced errors against England. They just cannot. The England are a different level to Wales. Australia v Lebanon, the quarterfinals: New Zealand against Fiji, Tonga against Samoa. What? What? A game. Wow, that is wow. That I'm going. Is, yeah, I'm and going. I am. And I am. I'm going. Yeah. If you can go, go, because that's going to be fantastic. And England against Papua New Guinea will be good as well. They're all going to be good quarterfinal ties. Kick out of play, puts the uh, Papua New Guineans back inside their own half, but you shouldn't imagine for too long because they'll get possession back again here. It's not a bad tactic by Wales, you know, slowing the game down, just making it a little bit messy, kick the ball out, let everyone walk. 
to their position, to their defensive line. Just knocks the Papua New Guineans out of their stride. Jonathan Davis is just checking his diary here to make sure he is free for yeah, Sunday. And Tonga Samoa, you are, yeah, are you? Well, yeah, you, yeah, you didn't need to check your diary, though, did you, Jeffrey? No. Connor, don't crowd. Hold square. Go Here's to. Tenser. Yeah, someone's injured on it. Yeah, there's a Welsh player down who's not looking too healthy at the moment. Hell now, release it. I think it's Chester Butler, is it? Hold. Referee's not going to stop Six the clock miles. because there's no doctor on the field at the moment. Oh. And there's no chance of the uh, the injury getting oh. in the way of this play because Papua New Guinea are going the other way. Just a physio on the field. As soon as a doctor comes on, then the referee stops it. But at the moment, Papua New Guinea are free to carry on. And that's exactly what they're doing. And this is Tambai in the middle of all that. It is Sherwin Tambai. Another is making his debut tonight for Papua New Guinea. Labert inside for Nenny MacDonald. And now we have a doctor on the field. We have a doctor on the field. I don't think the referee spotted that. You're holding in, hold. So they carry on. Yep, no, he spotted it now. Spotted it now. Somebody's giving the message. Yeah, I didn't see the incident. I think he copped a boot, a flailing boot in the tackle. It's a head injury. Yeah, it is Chester Buffalo. Oh, finger oh, in the eye, yeah, yeah, finger, finger in, the in the eye. eye. That'll do it. His own player. A little bit of friendly fire. Interesting, interesting character, Chester Butler. Here we go. Might be the end of his night, but um, he revealed about a couple of weeks before the last World Cup that his, um, his granddad was the great Colin Dixon, which, of course, qualified him to play for Wales. Yeah. So he's immediately called up, and his dad, Peter, was a footballer, wasn't he? West Ham and West Brom, amongst oh, others. So quite a sporting family there. Yes. Good heavens. Lamb goes left. Here comes Johnston. They search oh, further left. Welsh defence is good. But they always got out of play. Yeah, they just... Just not getting their angles right over there. They're crabbing across, and the Welsh defence are just coping them easily. You know, just drifting and using the touchdown. Look, they're all in the same angle. There's no one cutting back with an option or nothing to hold a defensive. And again, a ridiculous offload in these conditions. His foot's in touch, Joyce. Oh, not like that. It was only a, a I think they're getting more purchase out of Papua New Guinea when they hit that lead runner. It's simple. It's simple. What you do is do what they've done. They've dominated the forward exchanges. You just go run hard, get quick play the ball, and things will happen out wide. I think they're going out a little bit too wide, and they're just too lateral. 18 minutes to play. The Welsh looking for a score. Just a score at this stage. They started the night with a dream. Now a try will do. Antrobus tries to offload it. He's gone forward. Papua New Guinea have it back. He's trying too hard again there, Bailey Antrobus, wasn't he? They the Australian by birth. He was in the St. George Illawarra system at one stage, Bailey Antrobus, but he's um, been playing with York this last year. He's only 22 years of age. Big future for him, I'm sure. Well, you know, this has been a, a platform for these West players to try and get a, a contract somewhere in the professional game. Balls with a feed. Balls held in the scrum. Move to that right hand side. This is Aikens, Caleb Aikens. Lachlan, give room now. I'll hit you so Wales start oh, a set inside their opponent's half. I would admit, I'd be nervous if I was running anywhere near Justin Olam. I've mean, not no seen him idea, playing Sherwin. the Melvin Storm. He Go fires out of that gun like a cannon and he absolutely smashes people. Oh. There's a few high smashes shot. going on. Penalty, high tackle. Easy, easy That's one up. thing they'll have to control is, you know, their discipline. Papua New Guinea against England. Just high shot again. So a set of six. A set of six inside their opponent's half. What can they do from here? Joe Burke leads the charge. The West Wales Raider prop forward. Now it goes with Ralph. He'll get it back. No, he won't. It pops over his head. But Wales still have possession here. Still an opportunity. Ollie Olds inside again for Bailey Antrobus. Antrobus pushing hard. Labour kept a hold, but look where Wales are now. That's how close to glory. Can they get themselves over this line? Papua New Guinea going to be tested here. With Olds. Plenty of tackles. Olds 
spinning it back to the middle. Walker helps it on its way. Ralph now with a kick towards the corner. It's going to be caught, is it? No, it's not. It's it's rescued on that far side. <laughs> well, they crash into the advertising hoardings, but a, a, a friendly little shake of the hands there between uh, Evans and Nutley. Wales again, another goal though. Yeah, an early kick. You know, defence was uh, was narrow. Great recovery shot, by fucking left you winger. Stay behind it. Don't go early. <whistles> Time your run. So Time a drop out, and again, bear in mind it's a greasy ball, but bear in mind this should be Wales back in possession and is. And here comes Anthony Walker with a big run up. He came from the fence and came yeah. smashing in. Great to see him at this World Cup. His um, problems before the last World Cup, well documented with the illness. But the Welsh now in possession and in position. It's a rare opportunity again here. Olds to Ralph. Back on the inside comes Lloyd. Still tackles in the bag. Curtis Davis rolls in at Dunning Harm. Josh Ralph has possession again here. Ollie Olds now brings it to this left-hand side. This is Caleb Atkins. Inside for Keir. Elliot Keir. Little flick of the heels. Can he find a way to run through? No, he can't. It's just a solid wall that moves very alarmingly towards him and puts him down. Curtis Davis starts again. Oh, the ball's gone backwards. But they keep possession. Joe Burke offloads. This is Ralph. Ralph. Papua New Guinea being pushed hither and thither, but they keep they keep firm in defence. This is the last play. Ralph is slow to his feet. It comes with Olds. Olds just slides it through into the in goal area and it's shuffled away. It's another drop out yeah, underneath the that's, sticks. That's better from Wales. That's it. We go and break him down. Get a repeat set. That's the goal, right? Try and draw a little bit of energy out of them. They're throwing a lot of shape at Papua New Guinea at the moment. Papua New Guinea are able to deal with it. But when you have to do that for a second set, a third set, that's when it becomes mission impossible. So here Patience they need. The drop, and here comes Good another strike. Welsh wave of attack. Anthony Walker uh, slamming it forward again. Plays the ball. Here now comes Connor Davis. Platform being set again here by the Welsh. What can they work off the back of it? Curtis Davis spinning it for Olds. Olds now back it goes over the top and out of out of reach. Oh, it's been dropped. Dropped by Roderick Ty. But it was an initial forward pass. The referee decides. So scrum down Papua New Guinea head and feet. And that's disappointing for Wales. You know, we were talking about they need to show some patience. Good setup, good shape, good space. But as you were saying before, Jiffy, the ball's got to go out in front. It's got to be a nice, clean catch in these conditions. It's been atrocious conditions tonight. So, by that respect, you've got to respect the ball. You've got to make sure everything is perfect when you're passing it. Well, here come Papua New Guinea. Down comes the rail. It's not stopped, has it? Absolutely hammering down. Oh, and I thought it was going to be a night when, in these conditions, we we're going to see a load of handling errors. But, I mean, we've seen one or two, but not as many as you might have thought. I argue there'd be more forced handling errors right, rather than just clean drops. Yeah, I think, unfortunately for Wales, the only thing where they are going to score is by, by a kick. Good hit. In goes Emmanuel Wayne, the prop forward. Inviting four red-shirted Welshmen to get around him and make the tackle. It'll skip on a jump on that left-hand side again. This time by Jeremiah Simbican, another of the debutants tonight. Kick is high, Keir underneath it. It's going to be picked up, though, by Rhys Williams, who is barely in his stride before Rhys Martin has him around the shoulders and helped by Kyle Labour. It'd be lovely to see Rhys Williams score a try here tonight. He's the uh, the record-breaking Welsh try scorer, 22 in his tonight his 34th appearance, but he's never scored a World Cup try. Bit of a collector's item. He's not got one yet. Can he put that right here? Good carry. Again. Evans again. Kyle Evans again. Kia. Spinches another yard or two as he picks himself up. Here comes Rhys Williams. I know once he breaks the line, he's capable of going the distance, whatever the distance. So 
go. Papua New Guinea have to be careful when they're dealing with him. Outside. Ralph's kick. Johnston's across yep. there. And runs him. Ball like glue sticks to his hands. But the Welsh good defense chase. is good. And that's good. Here we are. Stand up now. 11 minutes Marcus to play. They've not had it all their own way in this second half. This has been a wonderful response by the Welsh. It's been a great, a, a, a gritty defensive performance in the second half. They've been under the cosh for a long, long time, the start of the second half. You know, they've rolled, rolled with it, and now they've had a little bit of possession and field position. Good performance, good second half performance. Well, they're making, making a little bit of progress here. Here it is, Bailey. Go for this is Reese Martin, who's just inside his opponent's half last before they push him back. And on the last play, Papua New Guinea no, will have to look for the kick from Labour. He has to be quick because the uh, the runners were coming towards him. He's got it away. Backwards. Evans, Carl Evans has knocked it backwards. Now, what can he turn this into? Not much because the defence is there waiting for him. Stand Don't forget, Marcus you two, by the way, you're picking the player of the match. Yeah. So we'll, we'll wait that with interest. Lachlan up, work to us on the left. Hold here, Dan. Ten minutes to play. Go to. A few of those Papua New Guineans would have caught your eye. There'll be one or two Welsh as well, but Emmanuel. you can never give a player of the match oh. award to a team that have been beaten as heavily as this, can you? So I think it's going to be a Papua New Guinean player. Think, yeah, I think Kyle Evans has played well, you know. He hasn't had much, much opportunity, but for opt-in, he's hard, he's done well. That will show your way well spires if you give it no him the no I know it was there's no way <laughs> yeah, Antrobus has run hard as well but yeah. no it's got to come from the you know, PNG side well keep it keep it we'll reveal that a little later no spoilers at this stage for the five minutes yet stop asking me then okay holes <laughs> with a kick towards the corner good position on there by Johnson who immediately throws it inside there's a, a knock on from nothing that's an easy take as well Blame the weather. That's one of those takes where you're already looking and thinking about where you're going to run it before you catch it. Yeah, you just had a little look. In these conditions, you can't do that. Just had a little look. It's a schoolboy error from the 20 year old, and it's given the Welsh a great position again. Just a try. That's all they want. Just a try. Here they come, working it towards that right-hand side. Ralph puts yep. it out. Good and feet. Caleb Aikens, Aikens, threatening something special. Offside. Yeah, it's a differential penalty. They're asking if they can play the ball back at the scrum. The referee says, no, you play the ball when I tell you. You tap yeah. it from there. So here they come again, here they come again. Can they get through this Papua New Guinean wall of defence? Resistance has been brilliant. Benyon, the first to have a go. Short pass again. Trying to burrow their way over. Can't get in. Will Evans gives way to allow Curtis Davis to take over in the dummy half position. Walker. Walker. Show and go. Well, that would have been a moment if he'd have managed to get through, but he couldn't. So Wales go left this time. It's with Oli Olds. Olds and oh, oh, Kier has it knocked out of his hands with the sheer weight of the tackle. But backwards and Aikens can pick it up. And Aikens saw a gap and then bang, bang, the shoulders came in left and right. So he was stopped. Davis again. Just trying to push. Just trying to push back. He held it. Oh, great oh, defensive yeah. effort from Russell. Dan Russell. Russell, had him Russell there. hustling there. And it had to be. There's still an opportunity, and on the last play, it's wasted, I think, Curtis Davis going out from Dummy half, and a big pat on the back again for Dan Russell for his defensive efforts there. Yeah, that fear says it all, I think. Just one of those things when you're a hooker, they just can't help themselves, can they? They've got to have a charge. White line fever. But not a bad place to start a set defensively, right? Half a metre off the try line. Yeah, but when you're losing 30 0, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not much consolation, is it? I'm trying to find silver line. I think oh, they've knocked oh, on again. Going. They've knocked on again. Wales get another go. I tell you, the, the roof will come off this place yeah. if Wales can score a try. Pity didn't have a roof, to be honest, tonight with the weather. Make sure you hold. 
run with one. Uh, you get that feeling it's a bit like when uh, Jamaica was playing against New Zealand you just were willing them to score a try come on Wales you can do it they've had two fantastic performances at this World Cup they were underdogs right from the start they came so close to making the Cook Islanders they really pushed Tonga in a way that Tonga might not have expected Wales with Curtis Davis this is Ralph Drops it back on the inside, a spin and a hit by Benyon. Now it's with Davis again. Short pass, big effort. Connor Davis. It's Curtis behind him. Walker helps it on. Papua New Guinea just soaking this up. Good defence there. Just pushing back at everything Wales throw at them here. Rodri Lloyd plays, Curtis Davis skips out, it's with Ralph, Ralph switches it to that right-hand side, Kyle Evans, oh, he's lost the ball! Kyle Evans, thought he was over, and I tell you, he wasn't far away, but he didn't have the ball with him when it really mattered. Yeah, great effort. Look, good angle, comes inside. I thought he just got to get down. The scrum defence just gets him, loses possession as he's going over the line. Scrum, boys. Oh. He's not doing too bad in traffic, isn't he? He's not doing too bad. He carries the ball very well. Powerful run. And you've, uh, you've, you've made your decision now, Jiffy. Yeah, we have. You know, the kazoo player of the match is Nixon Putt. He's got two tries. He's run hard, he's defended very, very well. I think he had his, uh, his head up someone's backside there in the scrum, oh, didn't he? he, so did, he we, did. Uh... Where is he off the field at the moment? Yeah, he's on the bench he's at the done, moment. He's done the damage. They're saving him, aren't they? They got a big game on the weekend. There yeah. he is. There he is. The kazoo player of the match. Well done to Nixon Putt. Yeah. Straight away there. Here's Wes Atenza out of dummy half. Some of these Papua New Guineans really enjoying themselves here tonight. Most of them really enjoying themselves here tonight. Set the platform in the first half with a wonderful display. Snuffed out any Welsh hopes of sneaking through the back door of qualification with that early try from Labour. And since then they've been in command. Labour it is now who puts the ball. Up yeah. in the air, Kyle Evans. Oh, it's bounced away from him. They're queuing up here. They're queuing up. And they're over for another. Nutlick. He went a long way to score his first. He hardly had to travel for his second. And Papua New Guinea with their sixth try of the night. Yeah, again, a very, very good kick. They've had some great hang time on their up and unders, the Papua New Guineas have. That was a spiral punch, Jeffrey. Yeah. Have you stood under one of them before? It was, yes, I have. Oh, they're horrible, it's aren't not they? Nice. They come down, trajectory oh. up, they, it floats away from you, and it's very difficult. He puts it in between the full back and the wing, and the bounces are enders, he doesn't get to it. That's a good chase, good, good chase. He's hit it perfectly, it's gone up, it started spiralling. You say Evans there, he would have thought at first, yeah, I got this. And as the ball comes down, it just bends away from yeah. him. I'd have thought where that came down, I think the full back should have been there. Carly Viken should have been there. There's a long way for the winger to come when he's got a, you know, that backfield to cover as well. And, I, and I'm guessing that he would have thought it was going to go too, because that's the thing about spiral punts. They just do not follow a trajectory that you'd expect them to. They go all over the place. And obviously, we're in these conditions, it's not a bad tactic. Well, he doesn't look very cheerful at the moment, does he, Stanley Tepen? But, um... you know, what's happened here today is that when they've gone back to basics, just in that set there, just a few great carries, just dominated the midfield, powered over, quick play the ball, you know, put the ball in the air, try time. So here comes Martin to add another two, and he does just that. He's very often a 100% kicker, and that's those are his stats here today. John Keir, the Welsh coach, rather forlornly going down to the touchline, knowing his side well beaten tonight by a terrific Papua New Guinean team. 
I have, to, I, have to, I have to give credit to the Welsh players. You know, you know, they they come from lower divisions. They've had the toughest group with a lot of full-time pros in it, and they have done extremely well. Jimmy Nutlick having the time of his life. Wales went short with a kickoff, and their reward is possession back again. Here comes Walker, picking up the speed and brushing them off. The big Welsh rules going up now around Doncaster. A minute and 15 to go. Can they get this try? Ralph on that right-hand side. Taken on again by Lloyd. Spinning and offloading and keeping it alive. Wales still with an opportunity. Benyon now. Dragged to the ground. Five tackles to go. They've got time to get through all five tackles. Ralph again. Oh. Bundled up. And bundled down. Curtis Davis spinning it left. Ollie Olds step inside by Antrobus. Less than eight meters to cover. But look at those big bodies in front of them that provide a formidable resistance. Maybe they can chip over the top of them. Ralph puts it up, but it's taken down by Nutlick. Nutlick, a try scorer on a couple of occasions, is a try saver on this. Yeah. He was waiting for it, wasn't he? I mean, that play is a little bit telegraphed at the moment. And again, no, none of hang time. You know, just didn't have enough time for the players to compete for it. It's been a gritty performance, though. This yeah. half, gritty performance from Wales. Well, terrific effort from the Welsh throughout this World Cup, but tonight we've seen a class performance in the rain here in Doncaster by Papua New Guinea, who now head off for a quarter-final tie against England on Saturday afternoon. What a job he's doing, Stanley Teppen, and his players on the field as well. Managed to give debuts to some of them tonight. Some of the superstars in those PNG ranks have also delivered. It might be raining and miserable in Doncaster, but there'll be parties going on all over Papua New Guinea right now. They've reached the quarterfinals in style. And they will fancy their chances against England on Saturday. Yeah, you know, they're coming up against a different proposition, a very, very confident England side. And, if, you know, their attacking play has been absolutely brilliant. But, you know, England will go up another level. Papua New Guinea will be the toughest they've, they've faced so far in the work. I thought some more were poor against, uh, against England. So, yeah, I think the Papua New Guinea will bring something different. It'll be a big test for England. Well, we're going to hear from Nixon Pot in just a second, the uh, the player of the game. But an embrace, end of the road for the Welsh. They've had a good time of it, but all good things must come to an end. Papua New Guinea winning by 36 points to nil here.